Hello and welcome everyone. This is Mike. I am the founder and CEO of Sweet Dash. In this video, we're continuing our first principles training. We've worked through portal overview and we've looked at the foundational CRM concepts. And now we're on to forms and the functionality of forms, how they're different, how they are similar, the important concepts behind them, etc. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at what we'll cover in this video. So of course, forms are integral to your onboarding and your ability to identify and categorize your CRM and or staff targets. Forms are the way that you'll intake information, you'll populate custom field values, you will give your targets choices, and those choices will then have an effect on how the target moves from there. So they are quite important. So the main purpose of this video will be to help you know which type of forms to use and when to use them. There are several types of forms and each one has a specific functionality that it's designed to accomplish. And this will all become clear as we continue with the video. First, we'll cover what logged versus non-logged means. It's pretty basic, but it's important to talk about it. Then we'll explain what known versus unknown is. And then we'll introduce you to kickoff forms, then update forms, we'll look at general forms, support forms, and subscriber forms. So this is our framework, so let's get started with logged versus non-logged. Now as you see, there's a representation of a browser here. And in every internet browser, Chrome, Firefox, Safari, no matter which one it is, it's capable of tracking whether or not someone has been authenticated at a certain website or software or whether they have not been authenticated. When you, your staff, or your clients go to the login page of your portal and use a correct username and password, your portal will set a cookie in that browser that confirms, yes, this browser is securely logged in to the portal. And that's what allows you to click from one place to the other freely without having to log in every time the page loads. Now this is important because some parts of your portal can only be accessed by a logged in user and some parts are designed to be accessed by someone that is not logged in. Another important thing to know is that in a browser session, you're only able to be logged in as one single user. You can't be logged in as multiple users. And some of you may have experience with this. You have to log out as one user and log back in as another user. So we could go deeper, but that's enough information to set the stage for the next concepts. Now the next concept you should understand is known versus unknown. So we've talked about how you have a target audience out on the internet and that the people who are part of that audience we call targets. Now when a target shows up for the first time, they are of course not logged into your portal. They're likely looking at something like a kickoff form, which we'll cover in a second. They're not logged into your portal because you've never seen them before. And then they submit the form. And then the platform makes another evaluation. It looks to see by email address if that target is in your CRM or if they are not in your CRM. So of course, if we've never seen them before, they're not in your CRM and they're going to be what we call an unknown target. But also realize that it's completely possible for someone that you have had experience with to show up at your portal or this kickoff form, not logged in, maybe they logged out or it's been a long time since they've been there, so they come to the kickoff form to the browser, they're not logged in, and then they submit a form. And the platform looks at that email address and says, oh, well, I've seen this email address before. It's actually already in our CRM. And we call that a known target. And the reason that this is important is that you can actually define specific pathways or workflows for known targets separately from unknown targets. And this makes sense because if someone shows up that you've never seen before, you may have a series of steps that you want them to take. But if someone shows up at the same place and you have seen them before, you've already done business with them in some way, then you may have another series of steps that's a little bit different in that case. And so this is the functionality of a known target versus an unknown target. All right, so now we're ready to move to the forms. Let's first look at what is probably the most important form of all, especially if you're getting started, and that is a kickoff form. Now, kickoff form is named that way because it kicks off a new relationship. It kicks off a new process. It's the place you want to start because it's designed to be accessed in a non-logged way. 
and it's designed to process unknown targets specifically. Now, yes, it can also be accessed logged in by known targets, and it can be configured to handle a variety of situations. But when we're looking at our target audience and we're trying to move them towards our organization, by definition, they're going to be unknown targets. And when they arrive at our landing page or form, they're going to be non-logged, of course, because we've never seen them before and they don't have a username and password. So we're focusing now on non-logged unknown targets. And what a kickoff form uniquely is capable of is taking a non-logged unknown target and moving them directly into a workflow, collecting data, making assignments, kicking off automations, etc. So if you think about this in terms of a funnel, a kickoff form is at the very top of the funnel. It's almost always one of the first interactions that someone will have with your workflow. It's very flexible. It can be set as a standalone form, meaning the form can have its own white label URL and you can even set the what we call friendly URL, which is the part of the URL that comes after your white label domain name. You can embed a kickoff form in your website, for example, or in a landing page, or you can use it with form cannons, which is a platform tool that can actually send a form to a target for them to complete. Now, typically we're going to recommend that when you use kickoff forms, you just use a few questions there. You just need to get the very basics and start off a workflow. You can use update forms, which we'll cover next to collect more information but it's important that you keep the friction low at the beginning of a workflow. And also realize this, that because you're exposing this form in a non-logged way to the public, so it means anyone can go to this form, and because we're expecting unknown targets, it means the form's completely blank and it can be submitted by anyone, anytime. This means that the form can be exposed to abuse. So, for example, yes, it could be hit by robots or spam bots, and to address this, yes, we have reCAPTCHA and hCAPTCHA integration. So that's typically not a problem. But also realize that bad actors, maybe your competition, someone like that, could submit the form using an email address of a client that they may be trying to interfere with. Imagine that you and your competition are vying for a specific customer and the email address of the CEO is public. And maybe your competition has bad intentions and they come and they submit the form over and over or they somehow try to game your system or just cause chaos with your form. This will do a lot less damage to your internal processes if you keep the form very small and don't have a lot of triggers associated with it, for example. So if you had a kickoff form that's exposed to the public and you had it triggering a project and an invoice and five, six, seven, eight other things, it means that every time it gets submitted, all those things are gonna be triggered and if the submission somehow is not valid, then that's a little bit of cleanup that you have to do inside your portal. And that's, of course, not what you want. So, of course, the kickoff form has a very important purpose. It's to kick off this relationship. But the best way to handle it is to move the relationship quickly into your portal and start to use update forms. Because update forms require that the person be authenticated, which requires that they confirm their email address. And this gives you a level of protection from that kind of gaming that may take place from a fully exposed form that doesn't require authentication. Okay, for 99% of you, that caution and advice is probably unwarranted. It'll never happen. These kind of things don't happen that often. But it is important that you understand the possibilities and the precautionary reason why we have a kickoff form and an update form why they can't be just one form, why they have to exist differently and have different requirements for access and the ability to submit the form. Okay, so just a little review. A kickoff form can be completed non-logged or logged by known or unknown targets. And all the data submitted by a kickoff form will go into the CRM and be associated with the target who completes the kickoff form. So if the target is unknown, it will add that target to your CRM and all the data that was submitted by that target will be in that target's profile. If the target is known, that data will be updated in that target's profile. And this can be a combination of default fields like first name, last name, and custom fields, which you can create unlimited numbers of as part of the profile. Okay, so now let's look at an update form. 
So an update form is different than a kickoff form primarily in that an update form cannot be accessed by an unknown target. So in every case, an update form is either accessed inside the portal where the target is authenticated and known, or in the case that it's sent by a form cannon, we actually include in the link coding that allows us to understand when that particular unique link is used, we know who the target is, they are known to us, and so the end result is that an update form is never completed by someone that we don't already know who they are. And thus the name, update form. Because when an update form is submitted, we are updating data in a profile that we already understand and know. And so update forms will often be your big heavy lifters as far as collecting data. After you bring someone into the portal and after you authenticate them, now you can really go all in on collecting your data and have these long forms that take time to fill out. Another advantage of an update form is that you can optionally show the data that is already stored in the database for a particular custom field, for example. So if data was already submitted by the target, you can show them what is currently on file with you for that piece of data, and they can update it if needed or just leave it in place if needed. Now understand that's something we can't do with a kickoff form because the kickoff form is exposed to the public. And so therefore we can't display any data, one, because we don't know who that target is, and two, if we display data to someone that's not authenticated, we're exposing your CRM data to the public. So that can't happen either. But with an update form, it can happen because these people are authenticated. They are known targets. So as far as how they're used, you can embed update forms in dashboards, in portal pages, in landing pages even. You can use the private blocks for landing pages because those only show to authenticated users. Or you can use form cannons, which sends the form links to the email address of the target. And for each target, we generate a unique hashed link that lets us identify that target specifically. So the form, when it's completed, we know exactly who is completing it because it must be that person because they received it at that email address. And the last thing to say, which I think is kind of obvious, is that update forms definitely are writing into the database into the target's profile. So if you have custom fields for a CRM target or for staff targets, update forms will add new data into the target's profile or update existing data associated with the target who submits the form. So again, you can update default fields or custom fields with an update form. All right, so let's move on to the next type of form and that is a general form. Now the best way to think about a general form is many of you have probably had a contact form on your website. So it's just a simple form that is filled out and when submitted, it sends you the data that was submitted by email. That's basically what a general form is. It can be accessed non-logged or logged. It can be accessed by unknown targets, but if it is submitted by known targets, we can track that. But what it does not do, it does not write or update data to an individual target's profile in the database. It simply records the data that was submitted and emails that data to the destination of your choice. It does store the submissions in a submissions database, but it does not interface with your CRM in the sense that it adds or updates data for your CRM targets or staff targets. And this, of course, has advantages in that you can collect data that's needed for a specific purpose, but you're not looking to create a lot of bloat in your CRM as far as all these extra fields that you definitely don't need to track over time. You might just need that data for one purpose at one moment in time, and that's what general forms are good for. They're good for collecting data and directing it to a specific person without creating too much data liability or data bloat inside your CRM. And these can also be created as standalone pages with friendly URLs. They can be embedded in a website, for example, or inside the portal. And they can also be sent via form cannon. So general forms, again, are different than kickoff forms or update forms because they have no real connection to your CRM or to your staff targets. They can't create new users. They can't update users. They only collect data and move that data, usually by email, to the destination of your choice. Okay, let's move to the next type of form, and that is a support form. 
Now you would only have the support forms option if you have the Pinnacle plan and have access to the support tickets toolkit. With that said, support forms are pretty much just like you'd think, they help you create support tickets. But what you'll find is that they are very, very similar to kickoff forms in that they can be accessed in a non-logged way or a logged way by known or unknown targets. And the idea is that you can put this support form just about anywhere you need it to be, exposed to the general public, and when the form is submitted, you can designate that the target is added into your CRM, how they're added into your CRM, and what context, what circles they're associated with. All the details and assignments that you're familiar with from kickoff forms can also be configured in support forms. You can use custom fields, which are support custom fields, meaning you can create a complex form that is associated with the support ticket itself. And then the added benefit on top of all of that is that it also creates a support ticket which goes into the support ticket toolkit. And you can even allow the target to choose things like the priority or the department that they need the ticket to go to, things like that. So there's a lot of powerful options. And from a flexibility standpoint, support tickets can be standalone, they can be embedded, they can be sent by form cannon, and they can also be used and associated with the remote chat. So if there is a chat, so if you have someone on your website or landing page that is interacting with your staff via remote chat, you can take that conversation and create a support ticket out of that conversation. So that conversation, the history becomes the first entry, the first message in the support ticket thread. So of course that's very useful and support forms are perfectly designed to work in association with your CRM, your platform, and the needs of the support ticket toolkit. All right, and the last form we'll look at today is the subscriber form, and this one's pretty easy as well. The job of a subscriber form is to add subscribers to your marketing audiences. So in the last video on CRM concepts, we talked about subscribers. And if you want to create a form that will add a subscriber to one or more audiences, you just create a subscriber form. You can make them standalone, embedded, or by form canon. They can work in almost every scenario, and the end result is when completed, they subscribe the target to the marketing audience, therefore making them a subscriber. Okay, pretty straightforward. And now let's look at a summary of what we covered. We've talked about logged versus non-logged and the differences. We went over what a known target is versus an unknown target. And we discussed the ins and outs of kickoff forms and how they differ from update forms and how those differ from general forms. We talked about how support forms are very, very similar to kickoff forms, but they also create a support ticket. And then we talked about subscriber forms, which simply adds the target to a marketing audience and makes them a subscriber to that marketing audience. All right, so that completes the forms and function section of the training. In the next video, we'll look at dashboards and pages and identify the differences between each, use cases, and give some examples of how you might use each one of those in your portal. Okay, everyone, thanks for your patience again. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.